there's nothing to worry about. It's just fine. I'm your number one fan. He just goes a little mad sometimes. We all go a little mad sometimes. Whatever you do, result don't fall. You asleep. Listen, asshole! No, you listen, you little bitch. Hang up on me again, I'll cut you like a fish. You know, it's Halloween. I guess everyone's entitled to one good scare, huh? What an excellent day for an exorcism. I am Dracula. I am eternal child. I am the eater of wolves and of children. One, two, we are live on the air, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, Knights of Horror Radio, live and in living color, as Sammy likes to say, as I like to say. Welcome to another exciting episode of Knights of Horror Radio. A lot to talk about today, as you saw right now. We're kicking it off with the haunt news, man. There's a lot of it today. A lot came out in the world of haunt. Three haunts with massive updates. A lot to talk about. Starting over with Queen Mary's Dark Harbor. They're going to get into the new Halloween Horror Nights announcement here in Hollywood. Followed by the massive announcement and news of what I think mostly is their IP lineup for Six Flags Fright Fest this year here in um, California. In Los Angeles. I know there's a Six Flags everywhere. So we're going to we're gonna dive deep into that. We're going to read some stuff, uh, give you guys the information you guys need to know about what's coming to these events and what you can expect from these events, starting with Queen Mary's Dark Harbor. And we're going to look at the newest announcement of a character returning to Queen Mary's Dark Harbor. Now, if you guys are not aware, Graceful Gale has been an uh, icon of this haunt for some time. Uh, one of many icons that they've brought into the lore that is Queen Mary's Dark Harbor. But to see her return, I mean, we knew that a lot of the OG characters would be returning. And I like how they're doing this unveiling. Kind of feels brand new again. It kind of feels like the excitement building up again for Dark Harbor. I mean, I think it is an incredible marketing tool that they're doing with 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 all these announcements. You know, last week we had the announcement of um, Lullaby returning to Queen Mary's Dark Harbor, and the week prior to that was um, Scary Mary. Now we got Graceful Gale. Is Graceful Gale going to be getting a maze? Who knows? Maybe we'll get an announcement next week. We are also fastly approaching Midsummer Scream, so keep an eye out for Midsummer Scream. I know there will be announcements for Dark Harbor at Midsummer Scream. They have their own panel this year, so I'm excited to see what they show, what they showcase, concept arts, all that fun stuff. So look forward to that. But I am excited for the return of Graceful Gale. That should be a lot of fun. Very creepy character. Um, love the uh, the makeup team has always done a great job on that character, so I'm excited to see that again. And uh, who can bring that character and take it to new heights? Because uh, it has been some time since anyone has portrayed that character. So very much looking forward to seeing what people can do based off that right there. Turning over down to Halloween Horror Nights here in Hollywood, we have a brand new original maze announcement. A sequel, if you will, from last year's successful original Monsteros, the Monsters of Latin America. Now we're doing Monsteros 2 Electric Boogaloo. No, that's not really the name of the uh, the <laughs> the uh, um, the maze. How, however, that would be incredibly funny if, if Murdy was just like, yeah, we're just going to call it Monsteros 2 Electric Boogaloo. That'd be hilarious. But no, Monsteros 2, the Nightmares of Latin America. I'm excited going the exact same spot as it was last year back in the Parisian Courtyard. We're back for a sequel, baby. 
And you know what they say in the sequel, bigger and better. So that means that we're going to see more lore expanded across the Latin American monsters. Now, it is no shy that the Latin American monsters, folk tales, all that stuff, original mazes like this have been no stranger to Halloween Horror Nights in the past. In fact, there's actually been an increased popularity of these mazes that I think a lot of people uh, are very fascinated with that uh, they're always proven and showing the numbers every single year. Monsteros 1 was amazing. It was probably one of the greatest mazes, I think, in the top two uh, for that year for me. And number one, obviously, for The Last of Us. But this right here, incredible runner-up. I, I think they did an incredible job with it. Um... And I, I think that the mixture of both the storytelling and the animatronics and the scenic, when it all put it together, it was just beautiful. It was a, such a beautiful maze, and they, they knocked it out of the park with this one. I can't wait to see what they do with the sequel. Let's read into it. John Murdy did tweet about it today, um, and he said it's right now. It's located, of course. Uh, you can see the cemetery taking shape in the uh, Parisian courtyard right now. And it says, we were conceiving the first Monstero's house in 2023. Well, technically, I wrote it in 2022. The idea of a sequel was already in place. We were just waiting to see how it was received by you guys. And luckily, it was a fan favorite for 2023, so you get the sequel. The facade is the Cemetery of the Lost, only a different section of the graveyard. It's a very large place. So many bodies are buried there. So you only saw part of it in 2023. Of course, once you step through the crypt gate, uh, you are transported into the world of Monstero's. Mir uh, oh, here we go. This is this is the fun part of me pronouncing names. Uh, Mirete, the caretaker, gravedigger, is still your host, and you might spot him out front. He's very busy these days, so many bones to deal with. The other main characters are El Charro, the dark horseman. That sounds really fucking cool. That sounds really dope. Uh, El Cadijo, the devil's dog, and the return of El Kakui, the boogeyman. So El Kukui is like tied into this kind of like original monsters, monsteros, Latin American universe. And I think that's really cool. Should be cool to see if they do a new take on him, if they continue to pick up where they left off from the last time we saw the Boogeyman, which I believe was way back in like 2013. Danny Trejo actually narrated the maze. Very good. Very good maze. If you're paying any attention... And I know you were. You might have noticed that all these characters were featured in a scare zone a few years back, also by design. We use that as a testing ground for an eventual house or two. They are all getting redesigned for this house. So that's a few tasty tidbits for you boys and ghouls. If you still have any questions, fire away. And that was the end of the Q&A. We might get more of this uh, maze potentially at Midsummer Scream, but Monsteros 2, The Nightmares of Latin America, and we got three, uh, two brand new characters, one returning character. And I'm super excited to see what they pull off with this one. I think this one is probably going to be one of the best, if not the best maze this season uh, at Halloween Horror Nights. Um, hands down, this house looks amazing. And I cannot wait to see how they... Because I, I think one thing that blows me away every single year is if you guys look at the space they use for that maze location, it's not a very big space. And they managed to pull off every square inch of that area to make a good five to six minute walkthrough every single year. So I don't know how, how they pulled that off, but hey, kudos to them. Feels like it's very spacious in there. Um, and they, they, they somehow pull it off every single year. Monsteros 2, I think, is going to be a banger. These characters look sick. If you guys have not seen the concept art, it is on social media, so check that out. But the concept art looks really fucking cool. I really like the way the characters look. They're looking like, you know, they're looking menacing, terrifying. It looked like it's going to be another good maze. Let's just put it that way. I cannot wait to see what they pull off in this one. Hopefully, we'll get some more news at Midsummer Scream. Uh, so stay tuned, and we will update you guys on when that might be. All right. I think this is probably the biggest announcement, and I saved this for the haunt portion news for last because this is this was huge. Um, Six Flags Fright Fest. Now, for years, Six Flags Fright Fest has been uh, a running competitor in the haunt scene, and um, over the years, I think it's it's gotten a lot better, and I think there's been more uh, updates and improvements to the haunt that are showing. As, as far as the one out here in, in Valencia. Um, and on top of that, I think with all the construction they're doing around the park, it's actually opening up more space for them to do more at the events. 
Uh, that being said, Six Flags Fright Fest is known this year as Six Flags Fright Fest Extreme. Now, last year they celebrated their 30th anniversary and they brought a couple of IPs with them. They had The Conjuring and they had Saw 10. This year, they're going all out. Not only is The Conjuring returning and the Saw franchise returning, but you are also going to get the likes of Annabelle, The Nun, Stranger Things, Army of the Dead, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Trick or Treat, and if you're in Mexico, DC comic book series, Deceased. I'm very jealous of that one. Very jealous of that one. Uh, and we'll get into that in a little bit. But the press release came out, goes as follows. The world's largest regional theme park company and largest operator of water parks in North America unveils Fright Fest Extreme presented by Snickers. Can't forget the Snickers because Snickers makes everything good and Snickers satisfies. Not paid sponsorship. <laughs> Featuring an exp uh, expansive lineup of terrifying horror franchise franchises ahead of the brand's uh, highly anticipated annual event. Beginning September 7th, thrill seekers and horror enthusiasts are invited to immerse themselves in the pulse-pounding excitement and terror that only Fright Fest can deliver with Six Flags' largest investment and expansion yet. This year, Fright Fest returns with the vengeance and goes extreme. Visitors to the Six Flags Great Adventure in New Jersey and Six Flags Magic Mountain in Los Angeles will step into the world where nightmarish creatures inspired by legendary horror brands come to life with Lionsgate and Twisted Pictures Saw franchise, Netflix's Stranger Things, and Army of the Dead, Warner Brothers Discoveries, The Conjuring, Annabelle, and The Nun, and Legendary Entertainment's Trick or Treat. Guests at Six Flags Great Adventure will also be treated to the new experience from Netflix and Legendary Entertainment's Texas Chainsaw Massacre, released in 2022, while visitors to Six Flags Mexico will have access to a special exclusive maze based on Deceased, the best-selling comic series but from DC Comics. And um, we have a quote here from uh, uh, Edithem, I don't know how to pronounce the name, Mr. Rami, I'll, I'll, we'll call him that. <laughs> For over 30 years, Fright Fest has been haunting the thrills and chills like no, uh, chill season like no other. And this year, we're turning things upside down with a huge array of amazing horror franchises. Chief Fright Officer of Six Flags uh, says, We will be taking pride in offering the best experiences and co are committed in innovating our parks each and every year to provide the most frightful memories to our, for our guests. Our theme haunted experiences, scare zones, and harrow uh, harrowing creatures lurking around every corner are sure to deliver extreme frights and unexpected surprises. So here's a little detail of what we can expect for uh, each maze this year. This is exciting news. I mean, this is huge. Now, before we dive deep into each property, let me tell you why this is huge for the Haunt game. And let me tell you uh, kind of my opinions about Six Flags doing IPs. First off, I'll, I'll, I'll get my opinions out of the way. I got to go through the Saw 10 house at Six Flags for Screen Break these uh spring break haunt that they do uh they that they that they, now that they have done for two years and we were fortunate enough to go through the saw the saw maze i have to say visually a lot of the sets looked really cool um my only issue the night that I went, and I, I don't know if it was just for screen break. It could have been a lot more filled up as far as um, monsters or actors go. Uh, but the night we went, it didn't feel like there were a lot of uh, monsters or they were short-staffed or either on breaks or whatnot. So we got a decent run through. And I will give props to where props are due. The, 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 the few that were in that maze that were running around throughout the maze getting the scares even if it was the same person scaring us multiple times i wouldn't even notice but anyway the the few people that were in that maze gave it their all and, and applauded them that was awesome i just feel like a lot of people need to um we need to be patient and see what this is all about um i went in and it's just because this is how my brain works. Uh, I went in with thinking of like HHN quality kind of things as far as <laughs> a maze at Six Flags went for uh, an IP. I don't think I should have went in that mindset. You got to remember, HHN has been doing this for years. HHN has been getting IPs and that's what made their haunt their haunt. 
they are the haunt known for bringing some of the greatest horror movies and IPs to life. On top of obviously offering you know a little bit of some originality to the scare zones and a, a few mazes here and there, um, but they made a name for themselves being the haunt that brought the movies to life. Usually that's kind of what Universal's motto is. They want to really immerse your audiences into what they're showing you on screen. Universal Studios does a very good job at that. And, and they, they do uh, some really great sets from screen to real life. I mean, it's, 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 you can't deny it. Universal does great work. The, the scaring may be a little... Uh, we can have a conversation about the scaring, cause how kind of you know somewhat repetitive it is. But as far as set design and set dressing and and bringing that that scene to life, Universal hands down is one of the best to do it. I I will put that out there right now. They have some of the greatest set dressers and um, prop builders. You know, uh, whatever behind the scenes that that build that maze and and dress that set to what that scene is supposed to be. They have some of the best out there that do it. There's, there's no argument against that. Now, that's for obviously to bring IPs to life. When you're talking about originality, I think there is so much talent out there as far as making an original maze and bringing the set to life. That, that takes a lot. I think it's even harder to do it with original work because you're going based off one imagination and you got to kind of bring your own imagination into it. So shout out to anyone who does set dressing, period. What I'm getting at now is I, I for a lot of you that are going to go into Six Flags Fright Fest, you know, and you should be excited. This is a stack lineup. This is something that they've never done before, and there's a lot that's coming to this event. If you're going to go in, though, thinking that it's going to be like an HHN, maybe go in with a different mindset so you don't feel as disappointed. I'm not talking shit about Six Flags because I love going to Six Flags. They've treated us very well over the years, and... Um, they have some of the best talent over there, and we enjoy going every single time we have the opportunity to go. What I'm getting at is I went in with the mindset that HHN, it was going to be like an HHN maze, and then I walked out disappointed because I had that mindset. You need to not go in with that mindset because Six Flags does things a little differently. I will say this now. Now, here's the positives about this. They are putting a run for their money for Halloween Horror Nights. Now, I know this is the first year that they're doing like a, a much more extended lineup of just IPs compared to like last year when they did the, the two or three that they did. But I think this is a serious competition now for Halloween Horror Nights, especially with Halloween Horror Nights trying to get the rights for the Conjuring universe for years, you know, and, and, and for them to just get Conjuring Annabelle and the Nun, I mean, that's huge, especially last year when they got the Conjuring, and I think it was based more on the movies, the first two. I mean, that was huge, you know, and... I know Horror Nights really wants to do it. I know Horror Nights would probably kill it with set design and everything, but I don't know. I'm, I'm willing to see what they can create from what it sounds like. They're going to put a lot of money and time and effort into this. It's going to be a lot of unexpected surprises. You know, it's good. With what they did last year with The Conjuring, it gave me hope I saw potent and I saw potential. I 100% agree with you. 100% agree. I, I watched the POV for Conjuring, and I think I like that a little bit more than the Saw Maze, but... If they are going by the word they are saying in this press release of them actually going to be able to take the time to present something and actually redefine Fright Fest, essentially, uh, I, I, I'm all for it. I'm just not going in with the highest of expectations. Because if I go in with too high expectations, then I will be disappointed if it, if it lets me down. Uh, and, I've, and that's happened to me before. With all that being said, I think Universal, if this is a successful year for Six Flags could have a major competition in the IP world with Six Flags. Now, you got to remember, Six Flags and Warner Brothers are partnered, so that's why they, are ha they have the access to get what they can get. Uh, Army of the Dead and Stranger Things, I'll be honest, that was a curveball for me. Uh, I didn't know they were going to be working with Netflix, so maybe that tells you that they might be putting in some time in the maze. Now, let's talk a little bit about Stranger Things because we have a little bone to pick with Halloween Horror Nights and Stranger Things. Why did Orlando get the Eddie Munson master puppet scene, but we didn't? Now, Six Flags, this is where I look at you right now. You have the opportunity to fix that and win the fans over so freaking hard right now. I guarantee you, if you put the master puppet scene with Eddie Munson inside of your maze this year, I guarantee you 
you will win so many fans over that they might even say, hey, that was actually better than what Horror Nights did. I'm just saying, if you skip out on the Eddie Munson scene on top of the trailer playing Master of Puppets, it might be bad. But if you can accomplish that and give the fans what they wanted at Halloween Horror Nights, that could, that could be some... That could be some fighting words right there. So, Six Flags, the ball is in your court. I want to see the Eddie Munson master puppet scene in person inside of this maze this year. With that being said, let's go into the details of what mazes are going to be there and what we can probably expect inside potential mazes starting off with the saw franchise now we're taking the saw franchise to a whole new level this year is actually the 20th anniversary of the original saw movie that's so nuts and that's that's usually the kind of like the start point of that that gore horror uh, subgenre celebrate the 20th anniversary of saw with an all-new experience honoring the franchise's legacy of terror by plunging guests into the depths of jigsaw's twisted mind guests will endure torturous tr uh, trials and come face to face with some of John Kramer's most diabolical contraptions before time runs out so we can get a little uh, preview of all the best traps of Saw man I'm, I'm for that if we're going to do like a, a, a best of Saw right here I mean I'm, 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 I'm all for it all for it um, the Conjuring Universe strap in for a tour of the Warren's most hair-raising and gruesome cases including those that inspired the conjuring annabelle and the nun in each realm encounters with cursed artifacts make you the target of the conjuring i mean i'm for that if we're going to be going boom 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 i mean let's do it you can easily do double the nun if you wanted to if you wanted to do the conjuring too um but it looks like from what i'm seeing it might just be the first conjuring annabelle and the first nun so the nun will still be in there and so that's gonna be fucking terrifying as it own. i really want to take sammy to this haunt now like sammy if you can find a way to come out for fright fest this year i will buy your tickets just so i can get your reactions to see you go through that maze i have to see it if there's a way we can get sammy out here for fright fest we need to make it happen 100 percent uh, maybe we'll talk to them about Nights on War Radio. I will buy his fucking tickets. I will. I have to see Sammy go through this maze. Stranger Things. Guests will be able to step into the popular Netflix series through this new immersive maze. Stay tuned for more details. Not much on it yet. But all right. Army of the Dead. The city of Las Vegas is under lockdown following a recent viral outbreak and survivors must look for an escape while battling the undead. Best place I can think this can go is where they had Aftermath. If Aftermath is uh, not coming this year because of all these IPs, put Army of the Dead in there. Army of the Dead would fit perfect in, in Aftermath, in my opinion. It already has those sets. You could just Vegas it out a little bit. Kind of put the, you know, you change the cop place into a casino. I mean, it could look good. Put Army of the Dead in the Aftermath spot. That's all I say to that. I think it's the best fit. Hashtag bring Sammy to Fright Fest. Let's get that going on social media. Trick or treat. Now, this is one we have seen at Horror Nights before as well. Enter a dark and twisted candy trail nightmare of a jack-o'-lantern lit path of supernatural encounters which tap into your deepest fears. With Sam, the infamous spirit of Halloween, as you guide, as your guide, learn the rules of the spooky holiday before entering a world where tricks dominate treats. Now, we have seen Horror Nights' version of this, and I think Horror Nights did a fairly great job doing this. I'm excited to see what Six Flags' version is going to look like and what more detail they'll put into this maze. Um, but I think Horror Nights did really capture it very good. I really liked Horror Nights, so now this one's just going to be a compare and contrast. Trick or Treat and Willoughby's would be ideal. I, I, can, I could see that. I, I think that would be the best place for it. Uh, especially to have that already facade of like that house. You can make it into the house from the beginning. Um, I think that's a good idea, Rob. Rob, I, I think, Rob, promise me this at the very least. Let's try to at least hit day one of Fright Fest together because this is a stack lineup. You're, you're the guy that got me in to the Fright Fest. It's only fitting that you and I go together opening night to go vi or whatever night we go. 
and witness this all together for the first time. Got to make it happen. Got to make it happen. We got to stamp it approval. By the way, ladies and gentlemen, breaking news announcement. The Howling Hour, a.k.a. Rob, is going to be on Nights of Horror Radio next week. So come down, 8.30 p.m. start time, Tuesday. Actually, I haven't came up with a date yet. I'm also waiting on a, I'm waiting on a podcast uh, date for sure. But let's go Tuesday for now. Um, but 8, 8.30 p.m. is going to be the start time for that when Rob comes on. So stay tuned. Next week's episode, Nights of Horror Radio, The Howling Hour. It's going to be good. All right, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Now, I wasn't a big fan of this 2022 Netflix, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, sequel, remake, reboot, whatever you want to call it. Guests are cast as visitors to Harlow on the heels on the, of the influencers set to revitalize in the town, but their arrival leads to a stunning and deadly secret being revealed. So I wonder if they're going to go based off the movie. I mean, listen, in my opinion, the movie wasn't the greatest. It had its scenes of some good death scenes. I just hope, my only hope that I get to see in this maze is that we walk through a hallway that looks like a bus and they recreate the Leatherface bus massacre. That's what I would love. That was the hands down the best scene of the entire film. That and then at the, at the very end, spoiler alert, at the very end when they chop off one of the main girl's heads as, as they're driving away. Those two scenes I would love to see so much in this maze. How they're going to pull off the chop off, chopped off head one, I don't know. But they can pull off the, 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 the bus massacre. So, yeah, I, I'm, I am pumped for Fright Fest this year. I really am. Like, this is, it, it, it's amazing to me to see how much every single year, especially like, you know, there's so much excited, excitement for Dark Harbor. Now there's so much excited, excitement for Six Flags. Horror Nights is getting pretty stacked. You know, and they already have the bus. There you go. They got the fucking Six Flags bus. We can do it. Um, but yeah, this is this this haunt season is looking fucking stacked. And I got to make sure we go do everything this year at least once. So I got to be very mindful of, of my trips, of when I go to places uh, and get tickets for places. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to this. Now, here's the one I'm a little pissed off about. Now, this is a Mexico exclusive for Six Flags over there deceased now i'm a big dc comics fan i actually read the deceased storyline it was one of the best uh kind of horror storyline that dc put together um and i i think it was cool of of i think one year last year they did a they did a promo for promo for deceased as like a scare zone or, or a maze in one of the other parks i think overseas or in another country and the way they made Batman look as like the zombie, scary looking thing was terrifying. Wanted to see it with my own eyes. You know, unfortunately, we're not going to get that yet. But for those who are theme park enthusiasts, horror fans, DC fans, live in Mexico, deceased. Based on the number one best selling comic series, fans enter through the Hall of Justice to find that the DC universe has succumbed dark sides anti-life equation see the just league like never before as they fight to save the earth or end it themselves will you be the one of the few to survive these new scares of the dc universe that right there deceased if you guys get a chance read that storyline if you're a horror fan read it trust me it is a great storyline i love what they did with it i think i own the graphic novel such a good storyline so jealous that's going to mexico but listen Fright Fest is looking stacked this year. There's no doubt about it. They are really stepping up and proving their name in the haunt world. And I, I'm here for it. I salute it. I stand behind it. Um, we always say we never want to see a haunt fail. We want to see more haunts grow because that, that's what keeps us going. That's what keeps us talking about things. I have had so much fun doing Nights of Horror Radio this summer so far to talk all these haunt news and stuff. Tuesday, today was a great day to host Nights of Horror Radio. I put up last night we were going to host the show Tuesdays like we usually do, and today they just happened to flood me with news. Dark Harbor, Graceful Gales returning. Halloween Horror Nights, Monsteros 2, The Nightmares of Latin America. Six Flags Fright Fest, a whole slate of fucking mazes. From the Saw franchise, The Conjuring Universe, Stranger Things, Army of the Dead, Trick or Tree, and Texas Chainsaw Massacre here in Texas and in Los Angeles. 
it's going to be a great haunt season. Make sure you check out Six Flags Fright Fest if you guys live in the Texas, Los Angeles, or Mexico area. You're not going to want to miss this. With all that being said, we're going to take a quick break and listen to some Mary Jane by Ewig Frost and maybe some TAP Midnight by Bone Hunter right here on Nights of Horror Radio.
Bro, look at this new fucking promo image for Alien Romulus. This shit looks terrifying, man. When you have an alien that fucking big just looking down on you, mouth wide open, you're fucked. No one will hear you scream. Man, Alien Romulus is going to be so sick, man. I cannot wait for that. Cannot wait for that. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Nights of Horror Radio. Playing the great fucking tunes of that underground rock and roll punk scene. As well as sharing the latest and greatest in the haunt and horror scene. And it is time for my favorite part. But before that, to finish up our conversation about Queen... Or, I'm sorry... Six Flags Fright Fest. I was reading a little bit of the comments before, um, you know, while we were on the song break. Rob puts it in great perspective. Rob's been going to the event for 20 years. And this is the most excited he's ever been for Fright Fest. Just the lineup wise, he says, this year for the big events, it looks like a year to remember. I thought about that for a second. And the last year for me, like a year to remember, I have two, which was 2016 Halloween Horror Nights and 2019 Haunt Season overall. I haven't had, uh, you know, I've had some memorable, I have had, I've had a lot of memorable moments every single year, but I haven't had one of those memory years where I can literally just watch something and just remember the nights that I went to that place, the things that I did, the people that I was with, like, haven't had that in a while. This year might be that opportunity to do that, especially uh, with what Fright Fest is offering. Now, before we uh, move on to horror news, I wanted to show you guys the teaser trailer that they released today for Fright Fest Extreme 2024. And uh, here it is right here. Um, this is what you can see and expect from Fright Fest Extreme. If I can get you guys audio. There we go. All right. Redo. This fall at Six Flags, something epic is coming. Featuring brand new mazes inspired by iconic horror franchises, Six Flags Fright Fest is scarier and stranger than ever. Tickets on sale now. Please tell me he comes back as a zombie, bro. Is he going to be the surprise scare actor this year? Can we have him running around? The okay, hold on. I didn't watch that whole trailer, so now I'm, I got a lot of questions now. We got to go back to this topic real quick. Okay, we got to go back to this topic. Are you fucking telling me that there is a possibility that the face of Six Flags, a.k.a. the dancing bald guy, could be a fucking monster this year fuck everything we just talked about i will go to the event just to see that you have me sold if that's the case you have me big time sold if that's the case i've been waiting for them to make him like a zombie or a mummy or a vampire or whatever you want to make him scary for a while and they're gonna do it if they pull that off this will be probably the greatest haunt of 2024 hands down calling it right now calling it hands down oh man the world of horror is constantly progressing trying to find new ways to innovate it honoring the legacy of those who have paved the way though want to give a special shout out to john carpenter and robert england for being part of the class of 2025 to receive stars on the hollywood walk of fame very huge in the horror world, man, and very, very well overdue for these two. Robert England, of course, has done many, many roles, but he's most iconically known for Freddy Krueger and executes it so perfectly. 
Hence why we have a replica scaled to Robert England's hand claw of Freddy Krueger's claw right behind us because that man has done some of the greatest things with Freddy Krueger, some of the best one-liners, some of the best kills, um, and he brings that character to life. I don't think there's anyone else that can play him, Freddy Krueger. Um, I know they're going to try probably in the future to recast the Freddy Krueger, but Robert England is Freddy Krueger, hands down. Um, so very, very much deserved for Robert England, and I can't wait to watch his whole uh, uh, ceremony speech. I, I love watching those induction speeches at the Hollywood Walk of Fame, um, and I can't wait to see what he has to say about his career, his legacy, uh, and of course, hopefully some Freddy Krueger one-liners. That's what we're all here to see. That being said, another director who I think is well overdue for a star on the Walk of Fame, John Carpenter. Not only is he the director, he's a writer, he's a producer, he's a songwriter. The guy is so fucking talented that he has literally created almost everything to do with his movies. Written it, directed it, produced it, wrote the scores for it. I mean, and his movies are some of the greatest movies out there. Uh, hands down, The Thing. They live fucking Halloween one and two, um, even though he didn't direct it, but he wrote it uh, Halloween three, which he also produced and co-wrote um, escape from New York, escape from L.A. I mean, uh, big trouble in little China. Uh, you know, I mean, it, 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 it has to be, you know, the legacy goes on. You can even put Halloween ends on there. I mean, there's a couple of good parts in Halloween ends as far as kills go. Not the greatest story, but the kills are great. He didn't write that, though. He was just a producer, and he did the score. Um, but, yeah, I, I think that, uh, you know, it, it's going to be interesting to see what he has to say about his legacy and everything. I can't wait to see um, just what the hell he uh, he can do. Sammy, we need you to come out to Fright Fest this year, and I'm willing to pay for your tickets if I can get you out here for Fright Fest. 100%. Raw. The Moochie is in the building. Moochie. I'll try, LOL. Okay, fair enough. I'll, I'll take that answer for now. Graceful Gale, Moochie, what do you think? That should be good, though. I'm excited for John. I'm excited for Robert England. They deserve it. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's well overdue, I think. Uh... You know, there's so much to come when it comes down to choosing participants to be part of that, of who, you know, is worthy enough um, to be part of that Walk of Fame. And I'm glad that Robert England and John Carpenter get to share their moments. Nosferatu, ladies and gentlemen. Anybody see the Nosferatu trailer? It looks terrifying. We're going to watch it live here on uh, Nights of Horror Radio because I think you guys need to see this one. I think it looks fucking terrifying. Uh, it looks good. Sammy, I'll buy you food. So you, you got tickets, you got food, Sammy. And yeah, so let's check out the trailer for Nosferatu together. Coming out on Christmas Day. Who's down to go to, who's down to do a little, who's down to do a Nights of Horror Christmas screening of fucking Nosferatu? I will rent out a theater for us so we can do that. I mean, let's be honest and let's address the elephant in the room. It's got huge maze potential. I think it does. I got to see the movie first, and we were getting very little with the trailer, but there was a lot of creepy aspects in that movie that can already be translated into a trailer. That looks like a mind. Okay. I will look that up for sure. Let's, uh, let's, let's do that. Oh, this is that new A24 one, huh? Okay, hold on. Let me, let me full screen this for you guys so we can check this one out. Absolutely fantastic, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We're going to have to do probably a movie re movie theater rental for you guys for that one. Maybe invite some 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 homies and do a little Knights of Horse screening. Our first ever. Would you guys be interested in that if we if we plan that way ahead of time? Like, I'm not saying we do it on Christmas because I know everyone's with their families, but maybe that weekend we can do something where we do like a meetup and we do like a screening of a movie. Nosferatu specifically would probably be like the first kind of meetup we try to do. See what we can do. Knights of Horse. Knights of Horse screenings. That could be fun. Rob. You better be game because you're going to be one of the hosts, buddy. You think I'm going to... I need a, I also need the best B-roll guy in the fucking business. 100%. Okay, we need to talk about this. Shout out, Rob. Big shout out. Wow. That, uh, 
that ending right there really tripped me out because I thought she was climbing to a roof and then it turns out she's inside of the house like on the fucking table. Wow. That looks good. Um, Heretic? Is that what it's called? Heretic? It looks good. It, it definitely looks like a mind fuck. I'll tell you that right there. Definitely looks like a mind fuck. Looking forward to that one for sure. Yeah, we're going to add that one to the list. Amen. It's going to be good. 50 years of Jaws next summer. And they're going to be releasing a brand new documentary featuring new interviews, footage, and insights. Looking forward to that. 50 years of Jaws, man. In my opinion, probably one of the only greatest shark movies ever to be made. Um, you know, I, I think it really chains the game as far as filmmaking went. Um, and as far as the genre of horror went. Um and the behind the scenes of, of the disaster of making this movie costing them year uh, about a year of production, you know, I mean, it's 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 an infamous story, but it's one of the greatest movies ever made, hands down, and no one can deny that. Jaws, what Steven Spielberg did with Jaws, terrified people so much so that I I, I remember hearing stories from people who watched it in theaters of being scared to even be in their own bathtub, being scared to even go to the deep end of the water in a swimming pool. That's how traumatized this fucking movie did to people. Like, it was just terrifying. And, it, and in my opinion, and still to this day, is why I'm scared to go to the beach into the water. Because of fucking sharks. But Jaws is iconic. It's one of my all-time favorite movies. Steven Spielberg, congratulations. They're going to be doing 50 years of Jaws. National Geographic is going to be celebrating this. They're bringing a brand new documentary next summer. Featuring new interviews, footage, and insights. Looking forward to that. I'm going to add that to the DVR. Have to record that one. It's going to be good. Also, Scarlett Johansson has officially come out and confirmed that she is officially going to be in the new uh, trilogy for Jurassic World going forward. She said the story looks incredible. And uh, she can't wait to jump in and uh, play with the dinosaurs man it's gonna be fun to see uh what they do with this next saga i know jurassic world started out pretty great and then it kind of didn't end well hopefully they got a new story for this and then kind of reinvest people into come back coming back to uh to jurassic uh, world as a franchise so let's see what they can do um time will tell and i have i have high hopes i i really do i i really hope that they uh can turn that franchise around all my Dead by Daylight fans, I know Mooch is. Uh, Laura Croft from Tomb Raider is joining the video game as a survivor July 16th on Dead by Daylight. Personally, I don't know what that has to do with Dead by Daylight. I guess because in some points there is... Is there really any creepy aspects in Tomb Raider? I mean, not really. You're fighting like militias and people just to get treasure but i don't remember that being very much scary stuff involved with the game but anyway if you are fans of lore croft you're gonna be able to play as her in dead by daylight on july 16th so look out for that looks pretty uh pretty interesting to say the least i'm sure they'll somehow implement something horror related yeah they're gonna it's gonna be like an artifact or something because she is a fucking you know that's what she goes for is artifacts so i mean they'll probably put like a, a storyline with that so that would be interesting to see how they, uh, what kind of bio they give her. Welcome to Dairy, the official, uh, na the official it prequel spinoff show. We already got massive news. Bill Skarsgård will be turning, be returning to play the iconic role of Pennywise. Looking forward to that. But now it's officially being rebranded from a Max original to an HBO original, meaning that we got confirmation that the series will air on HBO in addition to streaming on Max in 2025. So that's that's huge that they have uh, a lot of high potential for even it to be on, on network television. Um, so for them to be uh, putting it on HBO for all the cable watchers and anyone who just has like an HBO subscription or to put it on Max too. I mean, I'll, I'll probably be watching it on Max, but I think it's awesome to have the viewership go wherever you want it to go um, and to potentially get more viewership and eyes on the product uh there's no doubt in my mind these movies were huge in the box office no doubt in my mind the show's going to be huge over with the fans um hopefully it's done right it's written right so it's not a failure but you it's really hard to mess up a character like pennywise so if you find a way to do that fans are going to call you out on it 
I'm excited to see Bill Skarsgård return. He's also producing the show, so he's going to have a lot of hands-on with the show. Uh, he knows the character just as well as anyone else, and uh, if not more, not as much as Tim Curry, though. Uh, but I can't wait to see more of his performance. The early days of Pennywise, maybe when he first kind of landed and him kind of taking shape of the clown or kind of getting his first kills on Earth, like... I'm excited. There's the and the possibilities are endless with the show. So to see it go on Max and HBO to be an HBO original, they got high hopes for it, man. High hopes. Now, last thing I want to look up with you guys was last night's um, Monday Night Raw, specifically last night's Wyatt Six promo. Uh, I'm gonna make it a point here. You're probably gonna hear a lot of Wyatt Six mention in the next uh, every week, probably now that they now that they've debuted. Um, only because this is such a huge, like, horror element thing that I love that mixes two things that I love, horror and wrestling. So we got a new updated promo, Uncle Howdy, Bo Dallas, Taylor Rotunda, you know, Wyatt Six, man. This was the long arrival of the newest faction in WWE. We've waited months for it. They arrived last week. Massacre in sight. Come back this week, and we get a little backstory as to why they are the way they are. First having a little one-on-one -on -one therapy with Uncle Howdy and uh, Bo Dallas as to why he feels the way he feels, what he thought about his brother's death, how he's going to carry on the legacy of his brother. I mean, the storytelling here is so incredible. Like... The possibilities are endless when they go to Netflix. We can get more edgier. We can get more, a little bit more violent. You know, we can get away with a lot more on Netflix that you can't get away with on TV, on, on TV, on, on cable TV. You just, you, there's so much things that WWE can, can really open up the horizons to that. Again, the possibilities are endless, especially in the era that we are living in right now. The Paul Levesque era of WWE it's probably by far the best the product has been since the fucking early 2000s. And everyone is saying it. And that's the Attitude Era. It is something that has elevated the product on, onto new levels that I don't even think WWE knew they can get to. And they, and they have. They signed a three, uh, their three biggest pay-per-view deal with Indianapolis. The Royal Rumble in 25, SummerSlam in 25, and I assume WrestleMania in 26. Um, because WrestleMania will be in Las Vegas next year, which we're trying to attend. I think what they're doing with this Wyatt stuff is incredible storytelling. Until we get to where we need to get to of who their first opponent's going to be, what their first big is going to be. It's looking like Chad Gable right now, but that could have just been the opening mission statement of this, just who they are and what they're here to do. Chad Gable did have an interference uh, confrontation with um, Nikki Cross, this week on a Monday Night Raw, she crawled into the ring. The ring filled with fog, uh, and she scared Chad Gable off. He rolled out of the ring. No harm done to him. And she goes over to Michael Cole and hands him the box, which then is revealed as he opens to a videotape, and that was the tape that we just saw um, revealed. I would love it in the next coming weeks because I thought this, this concept was incredible that we get a therapy session with Uncle Howdy, and every member of the Wyatt Six as to why they became what they are and who they really originally were. I think that's a great way to introduce who these characters are, what their motives are, and it segues into, I believe, if done right, SummerSlam. Make them appear at the Money in the Bank pay-per-view, but just make them cause a little chaos. SummerSlam is when you give them their first big debut match, but give them the creepy segments every single week. It doesn't have to be all of them coming out but if you have one of them come out and then another video package like that i will stay invested be honest with you it's a little bit better than the qr codes i was having fun with the qr codes it was great and all but if i don't have to scan something just to go on a website to find something this is just easier for me it gives me the story of who the white six are what their motives are and who they're going to be going after leading into SummerSlam, which is the hope for right now they are doing a lot of big building in SummerSlam. A week from Saturday, we have the Money in the Bank ladder match. Chad Gable has qualified for said match. They could interfere in that match. Necessarily, They wouldn't necessarily be, obviously, in the match, but they can cause a massacre, not just to Chad Gable, but everyone in that match if they want to. 
Or they can go specifically after Chad Gable and set up something for SummerSlam. They kind of hinted towards Chad Gable going to another uh, faction with the Creed Brothers. Uh, and it would be a perfect setup for a Wyatt Six versus uh, Alpha Academy Creed Brothers crossover. Especially because they have the one girl on the team and Nikki Cross is the one girl. So they can do a, like a nice little mixed tag team match and kind of even it out. Still leaves them five to fucking four. So who would be that fifth member for Team Gable going into SummerSlam? Don't know. This is all just theory. It's not even confirmed yet. This is just the top of my brain. That's how I think. Um, there's a lot of potential, man. But I think, I honestly, my prediction right now is our first match with the Wyatt Six won't be until SummerSlam. What that match can be, I don't know. But that's like the second biggest event towards uh, compared to WrestleMania. So SummerSlam is a great debut for their first match, in my opinion. You just build on it towards there. If we every week we can get those therapy sessions with each member with Uncle Howdy, that could be cool of how Uncle Howdy essentially accepted them for who they were. Otis would be a part Otis to be a part of the six. That'd be interesting. Um Yeah. And there's still no word on Alexa Bliss whether or not she's gonna be part of the group or she's gonna come back and do her own thing. Um hoping that she is part of the group. But uh why at six, man? We're gonna be covering this every single week, seeing what's going down. Um, there was not much on SmackDown with the Wyatt Six. Jacob Fatu uh, was the one that debuted. And uh, we've been waiting for his debut for a while. Keep your eye on him. He's a great high flyer. For as big as he is, that motherfucker can do some damage. I'm so excited to see what he does in the War Games uh, match later on this year if they do uh, Bloodline versus Bloodline in the War Games. War Games! All right, ladies and gentlemen, well, that's going to do it today for today's episode of Knights of Horror Radio. Hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Today's very news-filled episode of Knights of Horror Radio. I had a great time talking with y'all. I will see you guys next week with my boy Rob, the Howling Hour, 8.30 p.m. Haven't decided on a date yet, but we will uh, we will get a day for you guys uh, once I lock things in with another guest that I'm working on for the podcast. So stay tuned. But 8.30 p.m. will be our showtime next week, whatever day we choose next week on Twitch. So stay tuned. Rob is going to be my co-host next week. And uh, we'll see what we have to talk about next week. Until then, stay spooky. And uh, another door. Another door! <laughs>